Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Ardian Berisha and I will be your organizer for this webinar. Uh, today we are presenting one of the most uh, discussed topics in occupational health and safety. Uh, introduction to hazardous material, worker health, housekeeping and hygiene. Our presenter for today is a senior consultant, trainer and coach in occupational health and safety and also a PCB uh, certified trainer, Mr. Raza Shah. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to go over some technical points so you will know how to participate in today's event. Uh, we highly recommend this presentation to be as interactive as possible so you will have the opportunity to submit written questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the question pane of the control panel. Uh, you, must, you may send your questions at any time during the presentations as we will collect and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. You can also use the raise hand function as well, uh, which means that we will unmute you and you will have the chance to ask the question directly to our presenter. Now, without further ado, we will turn over to Mr. Shah. Mr. Shah, please, uh, you may start your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I am Raza Shah from Pakistan and uh, I am the uh, director for ISO 9000 uh, for uh, ISO 14000 Ushas uh, and I am advanced leader uh, for uh, uh, SA 8000. And uh, today the topic we are going to discuss is a, a um, health and safety related uh, topic and it is introduction uh, basically these are three topics and we have merged uh, these three topics and these are introduction to hazardous material worker health and housekeeping and hygiene uh, these uh, three um, aspects have very uh, great impact on the performance and productivity and uh, would be of the organization so uh, we must be aware of these uh, uh, concepts and we uh, will learn today how we, uh, how, uh, what are the requirements, uh, what are these concepts and what are their requirements and during audits what type of NCRs uh, the auditor uh, normally raise. Uh, so uh, I am going to start uh, uh, the first uh, concept which is hazardous material. Hazardous material is uh, anything which uh, may cause risk to health, property or environment. And um, many organizations uh, use uh, some hazardous material but they must uh, use these material in a safe manner. So uh, by using these materi uh, materials uh, there should be no any dangers to their um, workers and to their property and their business reputation. And if if they, there is any problem, uh, it will be dang dangerous for their workers for their business reputation, and uh, they are they will also uh, be violating the uh, legal laws. So um, uh, any business should be aware about uh, the hazardous materials and uh, they have to uh, uh, manage uh, how uh, can reduce the risk and uh, make sure that uh, usage of uh, these hazardous materials are in a way that it is not uh, very much dangerous to the user or to the uh, business or to the uh, uh, surroundings. So, uh, um, if you, if uh, somewhere these materials are used, uh, the organization should um, uh, the potential of the risk associated with such materials, and uh, the organization should use the personal protective equipment. So, uh, like goggles, uh, like respirators, uh, like uh, um, like gloves like mask. So uh, the impact of uh, these hazardous materials uh, cannot harm the life of uh, the worker or user. And uh, for precautionary measurement for each hazardous material uh, the uh, organization should uh, develop uh, and uh, use the material safety data sheet. Uh, so the user can 
be well aware at uh, how uh, these uh, materials can uh, have a negative impact to him or to the surrounding and what precautionary measures uh, the user should take care while using these uh, materials. So uh, to reduce the accident and uh, we should, must be aware how uh, these um, materials uh, can be handled and uh, we should uh, uh, also take the precautionary measures to avoid any uh, accident. So uh, if, if a company uh, is taking uh, care and uh, of uh, handling the hazardous material, uh, it, uh, it will be uh, beneficial for this organization, beneficial in the way that uh, less time and money will, will be lost due to injury or uh, accident. And uh, um, decrease in cost due to spill or poor handling. And uh, improper shortage of, uh, uh, of storage or disposable uh, chemical. Uh, so if an organization is uh, taking uh, the implementing the hazardous material control, uh, it will definitely uh, save its time, its money, and definitely um, it, 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 there is uh, low chances of uh, uh, loss. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, it will be avoiding uh, the, um, any uh, property loss or uh, during the handling storage or uh, uh, disposition of uh, such materials and uh, it, uh, it will also uh, uh, be uh, not very risky for the reposition of the business. Um, and uh, if a company is uh, taking care of uh, the hazardous material handling, it will be uh, taking uh, care of the uh, environment also. So uh, the, the different standards, uh, international standards are also focusing on the uh, handling and uh, management of the hazardous materials. Uh, like uh, the uh, ETI uh, uh, is uh, stating that it is uh, the um, um, responsibility of the organization that uh, a safe and hygienic working environment shall be provided bringing in mind the prevailing knowledge of the industry and of uh, the specific hazard. Uh, adequate steps should be taken to prevent accident and injury to health arising out of associated with or occurring process of work by minimizing so far as uh, is, is reasonably practicable uh, causes of hazardous inherent in the working environment. So uh, well, uh, it, it is required that uh, the hazardous material should be uh, carefully uh, handled and managed that uh, it may not affect uh, the user or the uh, surroundings. There are also um, uh, some uh, ILO conventions which are, uh, are uh, uh, focusing on the uh, hazardous materials. And well, first one is the workman compensation. The, the uh, this ILO convention state that uh, the, there must be a, a list of occupational diseases and toxic substances associated with them. As so for uh, each trade, uh, the list of uh, occupational diseases and toxic substances uh, should be uh, declared or defined. And, and uh, the uh, second uh, ILO convention is Occupational Safety and Hygiene Convention 1981 requires employer to ensure that so far is reasonably practicable chemical, physical and biological substances and again under their control are without risk to health when the appropriate measures of the uh, protection are taken.
And the next is the chemical convention 1990 requires employer to ensure that all the chemical used uh, to work are labeled and that chemical safety data sheet have been provided. Um, and uh, the next one is the prevention of major industrial accident convention 1993. And uh, all this con the focus of all this convention is that uh, the uh, hazardous material should be a, 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 a taken, uh, handled or many in a careful way that uh, they should not be uh, destroy or damage the health or uh, life of uh, any worker or uh, property or the surrounding. The uh, other uh, standard uh, which is the very popular standard is occupational health and safety and it is also focusing on uh, the uh, on the Zardius material control and uh, it is stating uh, the class uh, 4.3.1 uh, is stating that identification risk uh, assessment and determining control the organization shall establish implement and maintain a procedure for the ongoing hazard identification risk assessment and determination of the necessary control and uh, uh, 4.6 uh, 4.4.6 of uh, this uh, standards also is related to the operational control. The organization shall determine the, these uh, particulars, these operations and activities that are associated with the identification hazards uh, where the implementation of control is necessary to manage the occupational health and safety risk. So, um, where, where, uh, if there is any uh, hazardous material uh, the organization should identify it and uh, introduce to some control to minimize uh, the um, uh, risk associated with this hazardous material. So, if, uh, the organization uh, must eliminate the ha hazards or risk. Uh, if there is any, if they, the organization is using any uh, hazardous material, it should uh, mini eliminate the uh, risk associated with this hazardous material and uh, that uh, uh, it should also introduce some control to uh, reduce or minimize the uh, uh, risk associated with such hazardous materials. So um, and if, uh, if uh, after this control uh, if there is uh, some residual risk uh, it should uh, take the corrective and preventive action and uh, should use the appropriate uh, personal protective equipment so that the user can be safe while using these hazardous chemicals. Another standard which is very popular in Europe is the REACH. It is also focusing on the handling and management of hazardous material and it and there are some other recommendation from ILO and uh, these are the uh, benzene recommendation 1971 occupation uh, cancer recommendations and uh, list of occupational diseases recommendations. So all uh, the focus of all these recommendation is uh, uh, the uh, hazardous material management and control. If you if you uh, see the cycle. It is uh, uh, starting uh, from uh, assessing hazardous material risk and then you uh, need to con design physical and uh, procedural control and uh, after designing uh, the control you have to train workers and managers and uh, then implement control and uh, impl after implementation the control implement emergency response procedures and monitor controls for effectiveness and improve controls as needed. Inventory all hazardous material. So this is a continuous uh, cycle and you have to uh, take care of all the steps uh, and you have to take care of all the requirements uh, to develop an effective uh, hazardous material management. These are some uh, uh, non-conformities which are uh, uh, raised uh, during uh, the audit. Uh, 
and uh, the first one is a young worker hand, uh, handling chemical in in some uh, organization the underage or young workers uh, the worker uh, below the 18 year uh, of age uh, is handling the chemical and the next one is a failure to provide the required medical exam the next one uh, is the uh, failure to provide uh, the required medical exam can so uh, the workers are not undergoing the uh, medical test regularly chemicals containers un unlabeled or labeled in a language worker do not understand some uh, containers which are containing the chemicals are not properly labeled or label in a, a language which is not uh, understandable uh, in um, uh, by the workers um, maybe a, this is uh, these are labeled in English language but uh, the workers cannot understand the English language so you have to label uh, these uh, containers in a language which are understandable by the workers workers failing to use the needed PPE in, in some organizations the workers are not using the uh, required personal protective equipment maybe these are not available or maybe a, uh, the workers are not uh, feeling that uh, the use of PPE is the necessary no chemical hazardous material uh, certificate for the local government in some organization uh, the companies are not getting and the required or legal certificate uh, for the usage of any uh, hazardous chemical or material government fines for improper disposal and uh, in some uh, organization uh, the uh, uh, organization is uh, disposing of the uh, hazardous material uh, which is not allowed by the government and government may uh, impose a fine uh, on this practice so these are some common uh, um, non conformities which we, uh, we mostly uh, noted during the audits. The next topic is the worker health and uh, um, you know you know that worker is the most uh, um, important uh, asset of an organization so uh, you, you, the organization should take care of the worker health and uh, it is not uh, uh, benefit in bene it is not uh, in the benefit uh, benefit of the worker but also for the benefit of the business because if the workers uh, are not um, healthy or they got ill uh, the operation of the business cannot be uh, done smoothly so uh, And uh, uh, during the, uh, the working uh, workers, uh, working the workers are also uh, take different parts in the operations, and they are uh, also handling uh, uh, the hazardous materials. So uh, the worker should be a, a given awareness and training how how they protect them, and uh, they must be provided. Uh, the necessary PPEs and uh, they must uh, uh, give, be given the medical facility and if they, they uh, feel any any um, illness or suffer any illness they should be provided with the medical care and uh, 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 there should be not any type of discrimination in pervene of uh, such medical facilities and uh, this medical facility or worker care should be uh, for uh, all the workers and uh, there should not be any discrimination uh, in this uh, way so uh, um, it is uh, in the benefit of uh, the workers and as well as in the benefit of the business if uh, an organization take care of worker so um, uh, there are some benefits uh, for the business less time and money lost due to a workers illness uh, it is uh, common if a worker 
is uh, not feeling well or he is ill, uh, the company has to uh, lost money and time. So, uh, and these workers satisfaction and company image in the community. If you provide the workers a medical facility, it it will um, give a more satisfaction to uh, the worker and uh, company image in this community also uh, get more um, good reputation. And uh, if uh, if a worker is greetings everyone and welcome to this webinar. Today's topic is the overview of ISO 13485 medical devices. I am Arta Lamani, the PECB organizer of this webinar, and the guest for today is Raza Shah, PECB certified trainer and chief editor and owner of Vitich. Please feel free to write your questions and comments in the question box in the right hand control panel, or you can use the raise hand function. We will unmute you and you will have a chance to ask the question directly. Mr. Shah will answer to all questions accordingly at the end of the presentation. Please, Mr. Shah, you may start the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I am Raza Shah from Pakistan. Uh, today, our topic is overview of IAS 1345 medical devices. Welcome to everyone. Uh, as a, I, as a uh, professional, I have been uh, uh, conducting audit uh, for the last 15 years in uh, different, on different standards. And uh, I am a reader for ISO 9000, ISO 14000, SA 8000, ISO 1345, and ISO 22000. Today uh, we will have an overlook of medical devices standard, which is ISO 1345. Uh, as most of the people are well familiar with the uh, standard ISO 9000, uh, so the ISO 1345 is um, also a quality management system uh, latest standard but it is for the medical devices um, it has the same requirements like ISO 9001 but it has some additional requirements and um, um, which are more mainly focused on the regulatory standards and meeting customer requirements and maintaining the effective quality management system uh, same like uh, ISO 9000 it's it focuses on customer satisfaction and continual improvement, but uh, it also taking care of uh, other regulatory uh, requirements. Um, more the IS one three four eight five is uh, have some more emphasis on record meeting records meeting medical devices requirement risk management work environment and cleanliness, compute, uh, complaint handling and corrective action. ISO 13485 follows the uh, uh, process approach introduced in ISO 9200 standard. Uh, so its uh, main focus is on the regulations. It uh, emphasizes more on documented management review awareness and sources required to meet them, define process and record to demonstrate confirmation. So, um, as far as the ISO 13485 is concerned, its main uh, focus is the regulatory requirements. This uh, uh, standard is uh, applicable on volunteer, volunteer basis and designed to a uh, particular medical device manufacturer. Um, it uh, it covers all the quality management system requirements. And it, which include uh, in Europe, Australia, Japan, Canada, South Korea, and Brazil. But it doesn't mean that uh, a company certificate certified in Europe uh, can be uh, uh, certified in uh, other country because the, every country has its own regulations. And if a company have to certify. Uh, in this country, it has to fulfill the requirements of this country also. Uh, for example, uh, if you are uh, certified on uh, ISO 1345 in Europe and you want to get certified, uh, launch your medical devices in other country like uh, Canada or Japan, you have to fulfill the requirements of these countries and um, you have to uh, get a 
have to plan and set the targets and we have to describe in what way, in what way we will be able to achieve this objective. An organization quality management system is influenced by varying needs, particular objectives, the production, um, the products provided, the process and employed, the size and structure of the organization. So uh, the quality management system of uh, different organization will be different because it is influenced uh, through the, uh, by the uh, needs, by the objectives, by the products, by the processes and the size and structure. ISO 13485 does not imply in, uh, uniformity in the structure of the quality management system or uniformity of the recommendation. So it is not in the necessary that all the uh, ISO 13485 certified companies have the same uh, set of documents uh, or uh, structure. They can vary, but they have to fulfill the requirements of the standard. But uh, it is upon each organization how it will fulfill these requirements. The 545 is related to responsibility, authority, and uh, communication. Uh, the organization should have to uh, define the responsibility as authority, and uh, the, it should be documented. Position, description, including responsibilities and authority. Organization chart can be included in document procedure or flow chart. Uh, independent must independent must be demonstrated for certain activities uh, like uh, internal audit, um, one design review, partner management respond, uh, representative. Bug document must be controlled. So uh, <coughs> the organization have to set the responsibilities and authorities, and these responsibilities and authorities should be communicated and must be documented because uh, it is the requirement of uh, 4.2.3 that every document uh, should be uh, controlled. And 5.5 also state uh, that within an effective quality management system communication must be encouraged clear and understandable by directional at all level of the organization open and active. So uh, there is a proper mechanism of communication. If you have mm, set a responsibility and authority of any uh, person, uh, it must be communicated uh, to him and also to the other concerned person. Internal uh, audits, external assessment, management review, uh, bulletin board, all employees meeting station box. These are all uh, uh, examples of communication uh, channels. Management review. Uh, we are uh, uh, 5.6 is related to the management review. Periodic assessment of the parliamentary system for continued uh, suitability, adequacy, and effectiveness. And uh, the inputs for the management review include results of the audits, customer feedback, process performance, and product conformity, status of the preventive and corrective action, follow up action from previous management review. Changes that could affect the quality management system, recommendation for improvement, and new or revised regulatory requirement. So uh, uh, during the each management system, these are the uh, requirements of the standard. You have to uh, discuss each element, uh, starting from uh, A and ending to H. And uh, you can also discuss the other uh, uh, things during the uh, management review meeting, but uh, these are supposed that you have to discuss each element of, uh, starting from A to H. And management review uh, output include agenda, attendance record, presentation material, improvement needed to maintain the effectiveness of the quality management system and its process, improvement of the priority to customer requirements, resource need, uh, need statement of uh, confusion, the effectiveness of the quality management system. So, uh, if you uh, are familiar with the ISO 9000, uh, the meeting will be in the same manner uh, which uh, you have or uh, you are managing for the ISO 9000 uh, quality management system. The next is the resource management, provision of resources 6.1. Resources can be people, infrastructure, work environment, information, supplier, and uh, partners. Natural resources, financial resources. Adequate resources are 
prerequisite to uh, an effective quality management system. So uh, the uh, management have to ensure that it is providing all the necessary resources because uh, if there is uh, no resources available, uh, the effective quality management system cannot be implemented. And uh, uh, human resources is uh, a main uh, resource and it includes personal performing work affecting product quality and device safety and effectiveness must be competent. So all the humans uh, who are uh, performing different uh, activities must be competent in terms of their education, their experience, their skills and uh, they must have uh, uh, been trained effectively and they must have the formal certification uh, of their uh, job. Like if you have uh, some welder or soldering, uh, he must have the electrical certification. Yes. Organization must be able to demonstrate this. And uh, if it requires that uh, organization can uh, um, present that uh, its uh, human source are competent. And the next resource is the infrastructure. It includes building, workspace, utility, water, electricity, waste management, etc., process equipment, software and hardware, equipment maintenance activities and frequency, porting services, cleaning. Uh, if not considered and appropriate, defined the above example can potentially affect conformance with product requirements. So you have to provide the uh, infrastructure which is necessary to uh, develop or produce a quality product. Work environment. The most significant factor within the work environment that can affect product quality are process equipment. Established work environment, controlled environment, clean room, personal, internal and external, health cleanliness, proactive equipment, uh, gear, uh, static uh, this setting this brand foods and growing coning established means defined documented implemented and made and you have to uh, establish uh, uh, these um, uh, work environment and it means that it should be defined documented and implemented and maintained the next section is the product realization and uh, product realization is starting with sample 1, planning of the product realization. Product realization describes the process starting with planning, determination of customer requirements, customer communication, design and development, purchasing, production and servicing, control of uh, monitoring and measuring devices, delivery of the medical device, record keeping requirements. And now we will uh, go through uh, these all uh, elements step by step. Uh, planning of the product realization the organization shall determine product quality objective and requirements, definition of medical device lifetime, record retention, establishing process and document resources needed, design and development, verification and validation, monitoring and inspection, test activity and product acceptance criteria, risk management records. Customer related process 7.2. Focus is on product and services to be supplied. This includes requirements related to the product, design input, output, for new product development, customer delivery expectations, versus delivery schedule, customer feedback and communication related, relative to order placed or product delivered, regulatory or legal requirements, design related factors included in customer orders unspecified customer expectation. So uh, you have to take care what that customer is expecting and you have to understand the expectation and requirement of the uh, customer so you can uh, develop uh, your uh, product uh, according to the requirement of a customer. If you, you are, uh, if there is some flaw in and the uh, uh, understanding of the customer requirements, you can fulfill its expectation. Uh, 
7.2 is customer related process review of product requirements prior to uh, committing to supply. So you have to first review what uh, the customer is asking. Product requirements defined are defined and documented. Uh, resolution of contract order discrepancy ensure ability to meet defined requirements. Review of post-marketing product performance, additional product information, uh, for example, service, uh, additional applications, maintenance, updates, customer complaints, advisory notes. Again, records are key. So uh, you have to keep record of each activity. So uh, before uh, accepting the, uh, any order from the customer, you must ensure that you have well understood what he is asking and what he is requiring and uh, if there is any mm, conflict you must uh, resolve this conflict before uh, accepting any order and uh, sample point is related to design and development and which state established procedure describe design process and all design activities goals and objective of the design and development program what is to be developed and timeline. The market uh, markets intended identification of organization responsibility with this respect to assume ensuring uh, quality during the design and development phase to include in interface with any suppliers. Identification of the major tasks by um, phase of the design, expected outputs, deliverables and records from each phase Identification of appropriate existing and anticipated measurements and validation and production related activities. The selection of the reviewers and composition of review uh, team. Planning transfer to production, risk management activities, supplier selection. And uh, design input includes uh, intended use of the device indication and contra indications for use of the device performance claims and performance requirements including normal use storage handling and maintenance user and patient requirements physical characteristics human factors user quality requirements safety and reliability requirements toxicity and biocompatibility requirements electromagnetic compatibility requirements Limits, tolerances, measurements, and monitoring instruments, risk management, or risk reduction methods, uh, reportable adverse events, complaints, or failure for previous products, other uh, historical data, documentation for previous design, compatibility requirements with respect uh, to uh, accessories and uh, auxiliaries devices. Design and uh, design input uh, continuing uh, uh, compatibility requirements with uh, respect to the environment of uh, intended use, packing and labeling, including uh, consideration of to deter to deter uh, forcible misuse, uh, customer user training requirements, regulatory and statutory requirements of intended markets. Relevant volunteer standards, including industry standards, national, regional, or international standards, harmonized and other uh, consensus standards, manufacturing process, sterility requirements, economic and cost aspects, lifetime of the medical device requirements, and need for the servicing. And uh, design and output may include specification for the raw materials, component parts and sub-assemblies, drying and part space, customer training material, process and material specification, finished medical devices, product and process software, quality assurance procedures including acceptance criteria, manufacturing and inspection procedures. Design output uh, uh, also include work environment requirements needed for the device, packing and labeling specification, identification and traceability requirements including procedures if necessary, installation and servicing procedures, material uh, fills, documentation for submissions, 
to the regulatory authorities where the medical devices will be if appropriate a, a record filed to demonstrate that each design was developed and verified in accordance with the design and development planning uh, and the sample design and development review uh, may address the following question do design satisfy specific specified requirement for the product is the input adequate to perform the design and development task or product design and pro processing capabilities compatible have satisfied consideration been addressed what is the potential impact of the product on the environment do design meet functional and operational requirements for example performance and uh, dependability objectives have appropriate materials been selected? Have appropriate facilities been selected? Is there adequate compatibility of the material components uh, or services elements? And uh, is the design satisfactory for all the anticipated environment and local uh, and load con conditions? Are components or services elements and rise and do they provide for reliability, availability, and maintainability? Is there a premium in tolerance and or configuration for interchangeability and replacement or plans for implementing the design technicality feasible uh, for example purchasing production installation inspections and testing if computer software has been used in design uh, computation modulation or analysis has the software been validated authorized, verified and placed under configuration control. Have the inputs to such software and the output been appropriately verified and documented? Are the assumptions made during the design process valid? And now we will talk about our design verification. Uh, which is uh, design verification is necessary to ensure that uh, design outputs conform to the specific requirements, design input, mm, test, uh, bench test, lab test, chemical analysis, etc. Alternative calculation, comparison with proven design, inspections, document review, for example, specification drawings, plan and reports. And uh, design validation uh, goes beyond the technical issue of the um, uh, of verifying output um, uh, input, it is intended to ensure that the medical devices meet user requirements and the intended use. Actual or uh, simulated conditions consider capability and knowledge of user, operating instructions, compatibility with other systems, the environment in which it will be used, and uh, restrictions on the use of the product. Uh, performed on the production or production equivalent units. If production equivalent, uh, need to document uh, why it is uh, equivalent. So uh, you have to document it uh, each and everything. Uh, control of design and development change. And uh, if there is any change in design, you have to also uh, need to be documented. A product design may require change or modification for many reasons. Change can happen during or after the design phase. Change may result from design review, design verification or validation, omission or errors during the design phase which have been identified afterwards. Uh, afterwards, difficulties in manufacturing, installation or, or servicing. This management activities require uh, request from the customer or supplier, change required for corrective and preventive action, change needed to address safety, regulatory or other requirements, improvement to function or performance. So uh, you, you can uh, change the design if it is required due to any mentioned reason. Uh, you have to also uh, 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 study the effect of the change. If you change the design you have to evaluate what effect it will have and on the on product requirements and specification intended use current risk assessment different components of the product or system manufacture installation or use
verification and validation the reliability status of the hardware. So uh, uh, when um, if you change, uh, if you are going to change the design, you have to see each and everything very thoroughly that what impact it has on the other activities. The next uh, uh, class is related to purchasing. Uh, it is uh, the same like uh, uh, ISO 9000. Even the class number is the same, 7.4. Purchasing supplier selection and control consists of establishing criteria for parts, quality, system process, control, methodology, etc. Evaluating against those <coughs> predetermined criteria, selecting ongoing monitoring, that stand depend uh, on the nature and the risk associated with the product or services and includes outsourced process. Uh, so you have to uh, evaluate the supplier. Uh, and check them and uh, it should be an ongoing um, um, monitoring activity and uh, it depends upon the uh, uh, product or services and uh, uh, how you are outsourcing it. Uh, purchasing information uh, describes the product to be purchased in sufficient detail such as technical information and specification test and acceptance requirement, quality requirements for products, services and outsourced processes, environmental requirements in manufacturing, storage, transportation, etc. Security requirements, certification requirements. So uh, when you are purchasing any um, thing, you have to uh, describe each and every information and you have to describe each and every requirement uh, which are necessary for you and uh, can uh, impact uh, the quality of your product or maybe uh, you, you have to fulfill some uh, regulatory requirements. Uh, purchasing information also includes uh, requirement for product approval and subsequent changes, procedure, processes and equipment, qualification of personal, quality management system requirement, method of uh, communication responsibility, special uh, instructions, feasibility and test records, Record attention and retrievability, etc. Uh, condition for review and change to purchasing ag uh, agreement, supplier records, and organization records. So you have to uh, also maintain uh, these information and uh, you have to keep in the record of uh, uh, these all the all the information and activities. Verification of purchase product to ensure specified requirements are met. Receiving inspection shipment are complete properly identified. Undamaged product in coming inspection 100% sampling. Uh, you uh, skip lot, etc. Certification of supply, certificate of confirmance, or acceptance test report from supplier. So you can uh, uh, you uh, can verify the product by any way why uh, you can perform the 100% inspection or you can uh, select some samples uh, to check or you can also trust on uh, uh, the supplier certificate. Uh, it depends upon the nature of the product and uh, the competency level of uh, the supplier. Uh, you must be practically defined within organization quality management system including action when required or not met. Applies to all products received from outside the organization quality management system. So, if uh, there is any problem uh, in the outsourcing process, you have your verification actually should be increased. And uh, now we are going to uh, discuss product realization and uh, 7.5 is related to the production and uh, service provision. Control of production and service uh, requires control condition and includes many aspects. Uh, these aspects are the infrastructure, documented and record, procedure, uh, specification, work instructions, and uh, instructions, test results defined by impact on the quality and regulatory requirement as well as risk management activities, suitable equipment, process management, monitoring. It is for lease, livery, and post livery, including feasibility. So uh, you have to uh, 
manage all uh, these things in a controlled environment and you have to control all uh, these things and you have to keep the course of these uh, all controlled. Production and service uh, provision uh, we are going to discuss the validation of process for production and service uh, which is uh, required where the resulting output cannot be verified. In uh, some processes you are unable uh, to verify uh, the output during the process. So uh, for these uh, kind of process uh, you have to perform the validation. And define criteria for review and approval of process, approval of equipment and personal qualified, qualification use of the specific method and procedure, criteria for uh, revalidation, software use in automated process must be validated. So you have to define uh, each and every criteria for such uh, process which are required to be validated. Uh, production and service provision 7.5 Validation of process for product and service. Process validation activities can be described in phase, definition, review and approval of equipment specification, installation qualification, operational qualification, performance qualification. So uh, where uh, there is any uh, such process, uh, you have to uh, define the uh, criteria in, the, in terms of qualification. Production and service provision, um, is, it is same like uh, ISO 9000, identification is required uh, throughout the product realization process. It includes raw material, components, uh, finished medical devices, this uh, facilities, uh, this facility at fault uh, diagnose, diagnosis in the event of quality problem is it Prerequisite for traceability. Provision for identification and uh, segregation, return medical devices from confirming products must also be established. So you have to uh, develop a mechanism and uh, by using uh, this mechanism, you can identify any product at any stage of production. And uh, uh, traceability means the ability to trace the history or location of product or activity by recorded identification forward to customer also known as tracking, device tracking, backward to raw material, components, process, use in manufacturing, calibration, etc. Uh, example, trace a non controlled back to its source and determine location of the uh, remainder of the uh, affected batches. Uh, requirements are defined for simply uh, implantable devices. So you have to develop a, a mechanism for traceability and uh, by using this mechanism you must be able to trace uh, the, uh, uh, and, uh, the history of any device. Uh, you have shipped to the customer or you have purchased from any supplier. The next uh, is uh, customer property and it states customer property within the context of the standard is defined as a property or asset owned by the customer and under control of the organization. Anything which has given uh, by the customer uh, to any or to any supplier or organization is uh, called customer property. Example of the such property are raw material or components of um, supply for ingredient in the product including packing material, product supplied for repair, maintenance or upgrading, product supplied for the further processing, packing, sterilization or testing, customer intellectual property, these must be properly identified, safeguarded, maintained. So you have to properly identify the customer supplied or customer property products and you have to protect them and you have to maintain the record of such customer property. And uh, next is that preservation of products applies to the product realization process and includes storage, handling, transportation and delivery may include installation, gloves, static, 
जिससे इफ मेयर गोनिंग टेम्परेचर इम्यूटेटरी डस्ट पार्टिकल काउंट पैकिंग मेथड्स ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एसी ग्राउंड एनवायरनमेंट नेटली कंट्रोल टू वाइड डैमेज ट्रायडेशन और कंटेमिनेशन ड्यूरिंग हैंडलिंग स्टोरेज एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो the mechanism that uh, uh, each uh, product can be uh, handled uh, in a safe manner and during the delivery phase of the product to the customer it should remain the safe and uh, it should not be damaged uh, control of monitoring and measuring devices is this class is same like the iso a uh, 9000 and it state the standard explicitly refer to the monitoring and measuring devices including software to ensure valid result uh, ins- uh, instruments shall be calibrated or verified at specific intervals traceable to standards uniquely identified traceable to products uh, protected from damage ter- violation or um, inadvertent adjustment during storage and use software used in monitoring or measurement process must be validated for example for calibration may be instruments used for uh, indication only not uh, quantitative uh, volumetric measurement uh, glass scale so every uh, instrument you are using uh, for measurement must be calibrated monitoring and measurement processes are required to ensure product conformance Ensure conformance of the quality management system. And now, now we are going uh, to discuss uh, sec class eight measurement and analysis and improvement. And uh, it start with the eight point one general requirements. Monitoring and measurement processes are required to ensure product conformance, insurance conformance of quality management system, maintain effectiveness of the quality management system. And eight point two states monitoring and measurement. and feedback as key performance indicator of the quality management system include customer related information post market surveillance etc internal and external audit results monitoring and measurement of processes not limited to product action uh, process but also quality management system processes monitoring and measurement of product may extend to point of installation and even three is a control of non conforming product Uh, if uh, this include non conforming product occurring in the organization own facility as well as to the non conforming product received or delivered by the organization uh, determine products affected identify the non conforming product at supply in house in transit at customer document the existence and root cause of the non conformity evaluate the nature of the non conformity it remain and record a uh, disposition to be made control by physical uh, segregation the subsequent processing of the non conforming product uh, consistent which uh, with the uh, disposition the scene not by other as appropriate regulate three uh, authorities customer uh, suppliers alternate material facility define and implement Corrective and preventive action assess the effectiveness of corrective and preventive action. So you have uh, to develop a proper mechanism of uh, control of non-conforming uh, products, and um, in a way that no uh, non-conforming product will be shipped to the uh, customer. Uh, the eight point four is related to the analysis of data this include determination collection and analysis of appropriate data uh, to demonstrate the suitability and effectiveness of quality management system to evaluate if improvement of the quality management system effectiveness can be made this come uh, in comp process supplier to performance product conformance trends of process and products feedback results of these activities should feed into management view as well L is considered for risk management activities. They also serve to identify opportunity for preventive action. So you have to analyze the data, uh, little bit of suppliers, little bit of uh, in-house processes, little bit of customer complaints and feedbacks, and you have to discuss uh, 
uh, do you should discuss uh, this uh, natural of data during the main review and you should you use uh, this analysis of data for the improvement. 8.5 is related to improvement. This again cover a broad scope. Continued uh, suitability and effectiveness of the quality management and system documented complaints, investigation and uh, resulting action. Product advisory note. This is uh, field corrective action communicated uh, to customer and where applicable to the regulatory authorities. Improvement and uh, also uh, cover the corrective actions. Corrective action is intended to eliminate non-conformities with the intent to prevent, uh, prevent recurrence. Non-conformity may be identified in the quality management system, on the product, in manufacturing process, in metrology, uh, with training, environmental condition, control of equipment with uh, suppliers. So you have, you can uh, take uh, uh, the corrective action uh, to eliminate any non conformity And uh, uh, the corrective action should be effective. Effective corrective action includes the following. Clear and accurate identification of the non conformity affected processes or procedures, identification of affected devices and uh, as recipients, identification of the root cause of the non conformity Action required to prevent recurrence, required approval prior to taking action. Record that corrective uh, action was taken as identified. Effectiveness check like to prevent uh, recurrence, no new risk introduced by the corrective action. So uh, every corrective action you uh, are going to take must be taken. And uh, in the same way, uh, there are also preventive action. And preventive action is intended uh, to address potential non conformities And this is uh, to prevent the potential non conformity Sources to consider include information and data from receiving an incoming inspection, product requiring deeper reject or yield data, customer feedback and warranty claims, process arrangements, identification of uh, results that are out of trends but not out of specification. Supplier performance, services reports, and concessions, devi deviations. Conclusion. It is important to bear in mind that ISO standards are updated periodically, reviewed and updated uh, that do occur, and ISO is due for the uh, update in next few years. Uh, as uh, quality system standards are updated, you must ensure that quality management system uh, must keep up with those updates in other uh, in order the manufacturer remain in compliance. So uh, this, this is uh, expected that uh, the current IS 13485 standard will be revised in 2016. Uh, there are some benefit of uh, uh, these. Uh, standard um, access to markets that recognize or require a certification, including Canada and Europe. Implementing a quality management system in general helps to motivate staff and provide a better definition of roles and key responsibilities. Reduce operational costs by highlighting process deficiencies and improving efficiency. Increase customer satisfaction by consistent Constantly delivering quality products and systematically addressing complaints, proven commitment to quality through an internationally recognized standards, add, uh, adds transparency to the way complaints, surveillance, or product recalls are handled. So, this is all about the quality management system uh, for the medical devices. This is just an overview. And uh, I have uh, rushed uh, so many slides just uh, to finish uh, uh, to the, a basic concept uh, of quality management system um, based on ISO 12405. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shah, for this presentation.
Now, with the time left, we will go ahead with questions. Therefore, if you have any questions, it's a time to ask them. Please use the comment box or raise hand function to, in order to, uh, to ask your questions. Thank you. The first question here is, in your experience with audits, what is a main nonconformity that medical device manufacturers face or you have encountered generally? Uh, mostly in our area, uh, the non-conformity is related to risk assessment. Um, in the medical devices, um, especially which are manufacturing in the third world, there is very uh, a poor risk assessment. They don't cover all the aspects of the risk assessment. Thank you, Mr. Shah. The next question is, if you are an outsourcing manufacturer, do you have to implement ISO 13485 or the outsourcer must? Uh, if if the, the major operations are under your control, then uh, it is not necessary that outsource uh, uh, process uh, um, should be ISO 13485, but if your core, you are uh, uh, managing the core processes also, then it is must that uh, uh, outsource uh, supplier uh, should have uh, one support and five. But uh, to be in the safe side, it is good that if uh, all the actors in the supply chain must have the one support and five. Thank you. Another question is, in your experience, does ISO 13485 apply to all medical device manufacturers? Yes, because it is a, a generic standard and you can apply it, a, it to all uh, the organization. Uh, either these are the small size organization or these are the big organization or what, whatever they are manufacturing, is, uh, it can be applied to. Uh, all the organizations. Thank you. Moving on to the next question, which is how often should a medical device manufacturer perform an internal audit considering the importance of the quality of their, pro of their products? Please give an example in your opinion. Uh, it is better uh, to perform the internal quality audit uh, twice in a year. But, um, but if uh, they, there is a big organization and they can uh, plan uh, their internal audit uh, by department wise. And if, if they, uh, the organization is small, uh, they can plan um, the full organization internal audit twice a year. In, in a year. So uh, twice in a year is um, mostly uh, organizations are doing their internal audit. Thank you. Another question is, what consent standard have most manufacturing used for the conformity of medical devices since the FDA has approved many? Pardon? What consent standard have most manufacturing companies use for the conformity of medical devices within their organization since the FDA has approved many? Um, FDA has its own uh, uh, quality management system standard and it is uh, QSR, quality system regulation. So if somebody uh, have to fulfill the requirements of FDA, uh, uh, it is better uh, to adopt the uh, uh, QSR quality system regulation, which is basically a, a medical related uh, standard developed by the FDA. Thank you. Let's see. I have the last question is, what is the main difference between CE marketing certificate and ISO 1348 certificate? The main difference is uh, IASO 1345 is the system certification. It is a, a certification for the uh, organization. But uh, C marking is for the product certification. It is for the uh, product that 
uh, it is fulfilling the uh, specific requirements. But uh, uh, ISO 13485 is not a prior certification, it is a system certification. So uh, the main difference is the uh, system certification and prior certification. Thank you. Because of the time limited, we have to conclude this presentation. However, if you have any other questions, you can send your questions through email and we will answer them individually. Thank you again, Mr. Shaw, for this informative presentation. Also, I want to thank all the attendees as well for taking the time out of their busy schedules to join us today. We hope you enjoyed the webinar. To keep up with our webinars, please check PECB's webinar schedule in our website www.pecb.com or our official no social media network. Since next week, we are organizing webinars on interesting topics. Next Monday, we will be hosting a topic on the proposed changes for ISO 13485 Part 1. Thank you again, Mr. Shaw and everyone. Enjoy the rest of your days.